Hello farmers and welcome to a quick precision farming guide in Farming Simulator 22. Something I use quite often on my Let's Plays is precision farming and I get asked questions at least three or four times a week. I can't get my score up here. I, this doesn't seem to be working. How do you do this and that? And I've been teasing you guys for a long time on doing a quick beginner gu beginner's guide to precision farming. So here it is. Uh, so let's just try to make this quick and easy to understand as possible. Hopefully. So with precision farming, you're going to have this tab over here, right over here. And we want to click, you're going to click on that. And here's your environmental score. You always start off at 50. I don't own any land currently or anything like that. But there are five things you need to maintain with precision farming to get your score up as high as you can. Because the higher your score is, the more of a bonus you get when you sell items. You can get up to a 15% bonus when selling items. Uh, so like grain or productions from production buildings. So the higher the score, up to a 15% bonus you can get when selling items. So the five things we got to look at here is we got to take care of our nitrogen, fertilizer, uh, pH value, which is your lime, weed control, which is, well, that's your weeds, <laughs> soil sampling. Uh, that is the uh, condition of the ground and keeping track of your soil. And the last one is tillage, which pretty much comes down to when it comes time to drilling your fields. So items that you will need for precision farming. You will need yourself a soil sampler. That's going to be kind of very key for you. <laughs> That's one of the scores that we just went over. Of course, you're going to need yourself a weed sprayer and a particular weed sprayer. I'll get to that when we get to the weed part. Uh, also, for your drills and planters, you want to make sure you get yourself a direct drill. And I'll go over how you can tell what a direct drill is when we get to the drilling part. So step one here, I need to buy this lot of land. So let's go here, ahead here and oh, farmland. And we want to buy this one right here. That is good. Yes. Okay. So now we own this piece of property right in front of us. So if we come on over here, um, we can see that it needs plowing. Well, that, that's step number one. But the first thing you really want to do is you want to grab some soil samples. So we're going to grab our JCB and we're going to take some soil samples. Pretty simple. So the soil sample I was referring to just a second ago, once you activated the Precision Farming DLC, you're going to come on down here and you're going to find the Asira Scout. And they do cost about 17000 but if you want to lease it, that's, that's fine. You can go ahead and do it. There is a mod I would recommend if you have like really, really big farming fields. Um, the Scout has a certain radius it's going to do a soil sample on, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But there is a mod called the Asira Color and Range Extension mod. You can find that in the mods list down below. Um, but yeah, this just makes the radius a lot bigger. This will do a radius of 32 meters, 65 meters, 130 meters, and up to a 260 meter radius every time you take a soil sample. So, I mean, you can do, <laughs> you can cover a lot of ground that way. So with the soil sampler, I've unfolded it. I got it to the ground. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up the map here on the bottom left hand corner. So this is the uh, this is the base soil sample that you can see in the bottom left hand corner. That green circle, that is the area that we can grab the soil sample in. So we're gonna go ahead and grab a sample. And we just gotta go all the way around the field and grab the samples. Make sure you cover the entire field. Because that is very key. So if you did precision farming in FS19, it is just a little bit different on how it's done. Not a whole lot, but it's a little bit different. All right, that is the whole field covered for grabbing soil samples, but we don't actually have them analyzed yet. So if we come over to here, we can kind of see over here that the field number 52 is all in a maroon kind of color. You can see soil samples taken but we don't know what kind of soil that we have yet. Now, if you look already, our score in the field started at 50. We're up to a 57 score. That's because we come down here to soil sampling because we have soil sampled all the fields that we own. This is for all the fields that you own, not all the fields on the map, just all the fields that you own. You can see our soil sampling score is up all the way. Uh, but what we need to do is if I bring up the helper HUD in the upper left-hand corner, you can see send soil samples for analysis if I press Y, so let's go ahead and press Y. The soil samples are now sent to the laboratory for analysts. You will see the results on the soil types map soon. 
So you do got to wait just a little bit of time for those to come on in. Now you do have another option if you don't want to go around and do the soil samples yourself. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to do it if I click on it. Um, let's see here because I've already done the soil sampling on it. But you can, you will get an option if you click on a field. You will get an option to uh, buy soil samples in a field. So if you don't want to do the soil sampling yourself, you can purchase them. But it is a lot more expensive. I see a lot more expensive. Uh, it will cost you more because you're paying for someone else's service. So you can see that costs nine hundred dollars to get the soil samples in. So now when we go to the field map, we can see we do have different soil types. So that is step one in uh, taking care of your field. So now that we got our soil samples in, you can see in the bottom right hand corner, we got the precision farming tab down there. And you can see it says soil, it tells you what kind of soil that you're in currently and the pH value of your uh, soil that you're in. So it says that it's good, but we can see it's not exactly perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and spread some lime on this field. Nitrogen level, don't pay too much attention to that just yet. Uh, you're not gonna be too concerned about that. And maybe not, I know some people would like to maybe put fertilizer in a field before you, uh, before you plant, but I would recommend that you don't do that. So we got ourselves a spreader here with some lime into it. So we're gonna quickly take care of the field and spread lime into it. I will leave the mini map up in the bottom left hand corner. That way you can kind of see that the uh, the graph is changing color by the pH value that we're adding. So you can see the color is changing, which means we are getting the right amount of pH value on the field. So with also precision farming, you can see once I get into a spot of the field where the pH value is what is recommended, I got the spreader on and it's not spreading any lime whatsoever because it's got the right amount of pH value for the soil type. Once I get into an area where it needs the lime, it will then go ahead and activate the spreader once again. Now, the only thing with precision farming, because you're kind of uh, doing this with sensors, and I should uh, probably have brought that up as well this a little bit earlier, but if you're doing it with sensors, it's, if you leave like little gaps like I did right there, I did that on kind of purpose. Now, if I go back over it, it may not spread the lime there because it's not a big of an area for the sensors to sense that it needs some pH value there. So you can see it went right over it and did not spread lime there at all. But you don't have to be too concerned about it because you can always, if I bring up the help menu once again, you can always deactivate automatic application rate. But the one thing that will do is it may overspread some lime in some areas. But that is the field all limed up. So you can see it shows also the target value if the help when the helper menu is up or if the helper menu is not up in the upper left hand corner you can see where it says target reach ph value 6.500 and that will change depending on the soil type that you're in now that the field is all lined let's go ahead and park the jcb over here we'll just jump right back into the field over here so now when you come into the field, you can see in the bottom right hand corner, pH value says that it is perfect. So now we're going to go ahead and we are going to go and drill a crop into the field. Now, you definitely want to do this with a direct drill or direct planter. Now, how do you tell the difference between a direct drill planter and drill with a regular drill? So if I go down to where it says cedars, so let's pick one at random here. Uh, let's see. First, I got to find one that won't say it. Uh, all right, so this uh, Lemkin seed drill right here, these machines are used to seed crops like wheat, barley, and canola. This is not a direct drill. Neither is this Amazon. But if you come over here to like the Coon, where it says no previous cultivating or plowing is necessary. If it says that, these are direct drills. And that's what you really need when it comes to precision farming. I am using the uh, Horsch Avatar. No previous cultivating or plowing is necessary. So that is what we're definitely gonna be wanting to be using. So if we go back, as now that I put some lime down in our field, if I go back to the precision farming score, now if we go over to here, and I scroll on in, you can see the soil sample is at 100%, the pH value is still showing at 50. It will stay that way. Don't get nervous. I'll explain in just a little bit. But let's go ahead and we got fertilizer in our drill and I got it set for wheat. Let's go ahead and unfold this. So 
So in the upper left hand corner you can see nitrogen level. It says no values detected yet. Okay, you gotta make sure we put the drill down. And the minute I turn on my drill, since it knows I'm planting wheat, it says increasing nitrogen level to optimal value for wheat and also for on the soil type. Now if you watch in the bottom left hand corner, you can see how the soil or the color of the soil is going from red color to a green color. Now when it comes to fertilizer, don't be too concerned about the color of the fertilizer because some crops in precision farming do not require fertilizer at all like soybeans. When it comes to soybeans, you don't want fertilizer in the ground at all. Well, let's hop out of our tractor. We come over to here. Now we go into our field on the bottom right hand corner. You can see a pH value is perfect. Nitrogen is perfect for the crop that we have. You also can see what the yield potential is and what the expected yield will be, which is 116%. Uh, it's probably not going to be that as high because I did not plow the field, which is not that crucial um, for your environmental score, but it is for your yield. So going back to here on your environmental score, plowing does not take into consideration at all. As long as you direct drill a field after you plow, then the score will be the best. Now, I haven't done the whole field yet, so our tillage score is going to slowly go up as I do the field. Right now, we're at 5.9. The more the field I do, the more that score is going to go on up. And that is our field all drilled with wheat with a direct drill. I'll show you the score here in just a second. Let me go ahead and clear off the field. All right, so now if we go into our overall score, you can see tillage now is up all the way. Uh, I think I may have missed a corner of the field, so that's at 9.9. .9. But yeah, you get the point. So nitrogen and pH value will not go up until it goes into the ground. So pH value, I do believe, will go up once the crop grows a little bit. The nitrogen level will not go all the way up until we actually harvest the crop itself. So uh, we got to go ahead and wait a day for the weeds to grow. And I'll explain all about those seed and spot weed sprayer in just a moment. So, of course, after one month of growing, we do have weeds in the field. And as I mentioned before, you want to use a seed and spot weed sprayer. So, I am using a modded one today. But with the Precision Farming DLC, you will get yourself a John Deere sprayer right here. And what you're looking for right down here is the seed and spray. You definitely want to get the sea and, sea and spray weed sprayer because what that's going to do is it's only going to spray the herbicide where the weeds are. So to kind of show you how it works and it's something we need to get done. And this is the Jatco weed sprayer. Once again, if you're seeing a mod here, it should be in the mods list down below. Uh, but it's going to make quick work of this. I do have the uh, sea and spot sprayer on here. So before we go into the field, I will show you overall. Soil sampling, as you saw, we got done. We did the direct drill in the field. That's why our, our tillage scores all the way up. Nitrogen and pH values still have not moved and they shouldn't until we harvest. And now we control, you can see we're right at, uh, right at 50% and our overall score is a 62. Well, let's go ahead and turn it on. And if you look closely, if I can scroll in, you're going to see it's not spraying across the entire bar of the sprayer. It's only spraying right where the weeds are. You know, kill all the weeds, of course. So we just want to make sure we get the whole field done here. Actually going that way, you can see a little bit better where it's only spraying where the weeds are. And you won't go through the herbicide that much at all. And one more pass ought to do it. Okay, maybe two passes. Want to make sure we get the whole field. I can de definitely see on that angle there. It's only spraying where the weeds are. There we go. The whole field is done. 
So now if we go into our score, our score has jumped up to 77. And you can see the Wii Control, we got a perfect score on the Wii Control. Now of course you can do all these other things differently, but you won't get the best score possible. And that's what you're really trying to do. So with the weeding all done, the field's pretty much all taken care of. And, and I should just go over this again. I'm only covering the precision farming part of it. I know if I come to the field, it says it needs plowing, which I didn't do. It needs rolling. And that would help out where I expect to yield a little bit more. But right now I'm just going over the precision farming aspect of it. So now what I need to do is I need to wait for the crop to grow and come time to harvest. And like I said, by when we go to harvest, that's when the nitrogen and pH value gets red and those scores will go up. And our overall score will go from a 77, probably up to like a 99, maybe even a hundred. You can see even right now with just uh, three of the bars all the way full up, right now it says your environmental score increased your sell price by 8%. So anything we sell, we get a bonus of 8%. And I'm gonna show you how that works at the end as well. But I'll see you when it's time to harvest the, uh, what did I play here, the wheat. And we'll see the nitrogen and pH value in the field bar go all the way up. And then uh, we'll cover on selling some stuff. So our field is ready and you can see still everything's looking good on the weed, soil sampling and tillage. But once I start harvesting, the nitrogen and pH value will get red. Why it does it when it comes time to harvest? Uh, I'm not quite sure, <laughs> but that's the way it works. Let me unfold everything here. Actually, I don't want, uh, don't want a straw swath at all. So I'm gonna come in here and give it a harvest. So I'm gonna get this field all harvested. I'll bring it on back because the harvesting is not what we're really here for. Is this basically going over the precision farming? We'll have a look at our score and see if we got everything right up to the max. So now with our field all harvested, our scores should be very, very good. Uh, I'm a little concerned. I kind of forgot when I was drilling the field. I uh, kind of missed a slight little part of the field right there. So that may affect our score a little bit since I didn't really get nitrogen on it because I didn't plant there. So it may be like 98%. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a little strip and I was going around with the avatar drill. I missed a little section right here. So it may affect our score. But anyways, let's go ahead and see. 97 and nitrogen value. Yeah, wow, that, 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 that hurt me a uh, quite a bit actually. So you can see I got a 14% bonus. If I got up to 98 or 99 score, I would have gotten a 15% bonus. So that's kind of my bad in rushing trying to get things done here, which I shouldn't be doing when I'm trying to make a, uh, a how-to video. But uh, with that being said though, that is where our score is. Now, one, a couple of things I want to go over that you don't need to do with precision farming. So, uh, because I did it at the very beginning, then someone told me, no, it doesn't matter. When you buy yourself a tractor, and it doesn't matter which tractor you, you're doing, and you're doing precision farming, uh, you're gonna see the Isera Pro Compact down here. Now you can see it's roughly $15,000 to put them on your vehicle, and it's for every vehicle. You can see them being added uh, right on the mirrors here, these little white sensors here, here, and I think there's even one on top here. So if you read it, uh, the Acera Pro Compact detects the real nitrogen demand of your crops while driving with the center over your field. You get more precise information on the nitrogen that is required. Now, at first I was using it. I got told it doesn't really matter. And guess what? It doesn't. You do not need those. I do not have, like on my tractor here, the, the T8 that I use to drill, I don't have the sensors on it, on the mirror. You don't see, see them on the mirror, not in the mirror. Same thing on the JCB. You don't need them. Uh, it doesn't really work in the game. To, so you don't need to spend $15,000 on the tractors uh, that's going to be doing the nitrogen. Now, getting back to nitrogen, as I mentioned earlier, there are some crops that don't need nitrogen at all. Now, what I'm going to do here, actually, let me go in and I want to, uh, wait a minute, I got to get on the spreader here. And I need to fill that with solid fertilizer. There we go. And switch that over. So some of you probably like to fertilize a field before you work in it. But if I come over to here and let me just narrow that down so I'm not covering the whole field. So right now, when there's no crop in the field, um, is this going to assume that you're going to be planting wheat? So it'll put down the right amount of fertilizer for wheat. So you can see the flag, the checker flag in the upper left-hand corner. 
that's where it's going to bring this, the uh, fertilizing stage to. And the bar way on the right side, that's the current state of the field. So I just want to put that on down. So we fertilize the field over there. And now we're going to plant soybeans. Now, in precision farming, soybeans don't want fertilizer at all. So if we come over to here, grab our drill again. Put that on soybeans. I'm only showing you this to kind of warn you about not fertilizing fields beforehand. Now, you don't need to put lime down every time. If I come into the field, so it was perfect last harvest, but now it's saying it's reading good. So, I mean, it's up to you if you want to lime every year, you can. Uh, it's going to help you out, but you're not going to use that much lime because you're not going to need as much. All right, so if I bring up the map, so you can see right now we are planting soybeans. I'm not using any fertilizer whatsoever. And you can also see the color of the field in the bottom left-hand corner is not changing at all. So you may be used to looking at it and saying, why is that not changing? Because we need fertilizer. Soybeans don't want any, so it's going to read in red because it's going to be low state of fertilizer. So if you come over here, you can see nitrogen. It says 35, but it requires zero. It says perfect. Now if I come over here, and we're going to plant where we fertilized. Still won't take any fertilizer. And we come over here, you see, we got in the bottom right hand corner, we got 180, but it requires zero. So you just don't need to fertilize before you put down your crop. As long as you got yourself a direct row with fertilizer spray, uh, fertilizer capacity in it, you're more than fine. So now that we've done one field, you can see our score is almost perfect because I screwed up on the planting part of it. Um, so yeah, we got a score of 97. Now what's gonna happen, you may ask, if we were to buy another field. Well, our score is gonna get all screwed up. Uh, let's just buy this over here. And now if you go back to our precision farming score, our score has dropped down to 61 because the score in this field here, because we haven't done nothing to it, all the scores in this field are at 50 and it drops our overall score from all the fields down to there. So we went from 8% down to 3%. So be careful when you're buying your fields, make sure you sell your products before you buy new fields because it's, it's gonna take a year for everything to register what's in it. Now, going back to this field here, you can see our score is up almost on everything. Uh, the pH value now has been registered and so has the nitrogen. So that'll pretty much stay the same year after year as long as you keep up on it. Same, the same thing with the soil samples. And how do you know when you need soil samples? Well, if you come over to here to the pH value, you can see you got uh, the pH value and the color co uh, coordination to it. You're going to come down here and you'll see black where it says out of data. So if this whole field was black, that means you need some more soil samples. Same thing for the nitrogen. Now, if I wanted to uh, get my score back up, if I go back to farmland and we sell this, sell that uh, farmland back, our score has jumped back up to 97. Uh, but the next thing I want to show you, because we do get a score, if you've never done pre precision farming, as you can see, we get a 14% bonus. Uh, we're going to go ahead and sell some stuff. Actually, let me just grab... Let me grab my grain trailer here that I didn't really use and we'll go sell some crop. I'll just throw some, yeah, we'll just fill up with wheat. All right, let's go sell some wheat and we'll see the bonus that we get for 120,000 liters of wheat at this time of the year. All right, let's sell some grain and we'll see the environmental score bonus kick in. So we will get two totals in the upper right hand corner. It'll show you what we got for what we sold, and then it should say environmental score bonus, and it'll show you the money that we got from the bonus. So as you saw, I only fertilized the field once when I drilled it. That's the only time I had to do it. Um, of course, lime is probably, like I said, you can do it almost every year, and you won't use as much lime at all if you lime it every year. So 41,834 for the harvest and 5,886 for the environmental score bonus. So 
yeah, if you've never done precision farming, you do get a bonus if your score is up high enough. And yeah, I, I just prefer precision farming myself in my Let's Plays because uh, to me, it seems like it's less work. You know, I, I guess uh, some could argue that. But I hope this video was kind of helpful to you. I know some people out there were kind of confused on the tillage score and why the nitrogen and pH value weren't going up the field. You have to uh, get it through one cycle for those to register. And uh, I was also getting asked why the score would change every time they bought a field because, well, you're adding a field you haven't done nothing to yet, so you gotta you gotta keep it on up. But hopefully the the video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I or someone else, hopefully, can reply to you and answer your questions. Um, like I said, this is just a real beginner's guide. I don't want. I mean, we can get into real depth of it on to other things what precision farming brings. But as for field work, I hope I hope that was uh, helpful to you. But that's going to do it for today, guys. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy the video. I do appreciate you watching, as always. And I'll catch you again in Farming Simulator 22. But until then, have a good one.